Over the past 10 years, I've set up my DAW on multiple machines, two iMacs and two MacBook Pros to be specific. And let me tell you, every single time I delve into the realm of getting a new computer, there are a bunch of settings that demand my attention. Some are really obvious, while others bite me in the butt down the track and require a quick Google search to refresh my memory. Now, I'm going to be showing all these tips across Pro Tools, Ableton, and Logic. If you're in FL Studio or another DAW, they still apply to you. Now, if you've ever been one of those people who just drag files off the desktop into a session, only to find that when you move the session, nothing links up, this is a super critical setting you need to have, um, and that is import on drag. So if you go to Pro Tools Preferences, under Processing, automatically copy files on import. So that means any files you drag in will get copied into its root folder for the session. So even if you delete that file off your desktop, you'll always have a local copy for your session inside that session folder. Now, if you're on Ableton, it's a bit of a step-by-step -step process, but it can still be done. Before you save your session, go File, Manage Files. And then if you click on Manage Project, it'll show you all the files that you're using externally. And then all you have to do is click Yes to collecting it into your project under External Files, ask it to collect it and then click collect all and save. So this way when you save your project, any of the external files get imported into your main Ableton file. And if you're in Logic, the way to do this is you go file, project settings, assets, and then copy audio files into projects. So as you bring things in, it'll all get stored with your logic file. Now, for me, whenever you create new sessions, make sure by default, you are setting them at 32-bit float. Now, if you're in Pro Tools, this specific tip is just for you. And if you go to preferences and then I'm pretty sure it's in operational processing. It's in processing. Here it is. Whenever you commit a rendered file is to always use 32-bit. And this is really important because if you have a 24-bit session and you've got signal that's going using the full 8-bit float. When you go down to 24-bit for renders to 24, you're going to get clipping or hard clipping. This way, if you're always using 32-bit whenever it's rendering a file in the background, you're still retaining that information, those 8 bits of float above the 24 bits of information available. The next one is for mixing engineers, and this is your delay compensation. This is simple in Pro Tools option, and make sure delay compensation is turned on. If you're in Logic and you go into your settings, if you click on audio, uh, actually, not audio, yes, in general, plugin latency, your compensation, you have it on all, not just audio and software tracks, and not just off, you have it plugin latency set to all. And if you're in Ableton, it defaults with it on, so you don't have to worry about changing any settings. The next little setting is you want to be able to auto fade clips. Now in Pro Tools Ultimate, there's a setting you can do that with, otherwise you can batch fades in Pro Tools Studio using Command F, and basically you highlight the regions you want to use, Command F, and then you can add little fades at the start and end of all those clips so you don't get any clicks or pops. Now, if you're in Ableton, under uh, preferences in record audio warp, where is it? Uh, create fades on clip edges, make sure that is turned on. As for logic, it was a little bit clunkier to figure something out and I actually didn't. So that's gonna require a bit more Googling on your part, but figure out how you can always have auto fade on your clips. The next setting is X or solo mode, which means as you solo one track and then you go to the next, it cancels the previous solo. And in Pro Tools, you do that by going options, solo mode, X or because if it's a latch, you'll just keep soloing multiple tracks next to one another. Um, in Ableton, it's on by default. And if you're on Logic, rather than just clicking solo and then canceling another one, you hold down option key and it'll X or latch um, the solo buttons together. Chances are you don't use the stock EQ, the stock compressor when you're mixing. You're probably using Pro Q3 or something that you really like um, to use that you know well. So if you go into your Pro Tools preferences under mixing, you can set a default EQ and a default dynamics processor and actually make a default to an insert slot whenever you create a new channel. But in Ableton, the only sort of workaround I could get was if you right click on a plugin and then add it to your favorites, it gets collected into your favorites, which is just a little tab at the top, which makes it easy to just navigate to tools that you always use and quickly drag it across. If you use a plugin a certain way, there's a certain sort of setup you have for it, um, save it as your user default. So in Pro Tools, you go setting preferences, set plugin default to user setting. And that way you can always, whenever you open up, let's say this SSL channel strip, I've always got everything dialed in, the gate turned off, some of the noise turned off, everything dialed into the way I like to start my session with it. In Ableton, it's as simple as control right clicking and then going save as default configuration, which is really good. And in Logic, 
logic on your plugin setup pop-up menu if you just click down there and then go save as default every time you open up that plugin it'll save with the, it'll open up with those settings you've saved the next is session backup limits now in pro tools if you go to preferences operation and auto backup i like to have this at 100 most recent backups backed up every five minutes because sometimes yep 100 backups is enough sometimes you need to go back 30 40 different backups ago because you're working on a track for a few weeks and you just want to go back to a particular version there might be a particular drum mix that somebody liked and you just want to import session data from that date that's how i do that i keep 100 most recent session backups just in case the only difference is in ableton command s is your friend it will keep a backlog of the last 10 saved sessions with your ableton file but don't expect more than that unless you save new versions of the ableton session and logic is similar to pro tools if you go into settings general it's got 10 versions backed up and you just have to change that to 100 and you're good to go the next are your default bus names now i like to make sure in my session template i have everything labeled not bus one two three four five six seven eight but properly labeled for what they do. Now, if you go into my buses here, you see where the no lead vocals are, instrument only mixes, um, snare effects, drum effects, orchestral effects, printer for the background vocals. Everything is labeled correctly and this is all pre-prepared. So if I need to do something, I can quickly route it out and everything's labeled good to go. Um, in Pro Tools, it's simple options, no, setup IO, there it is. Uh, it's been a little while. And then you just go into your bus and you rename all the things you need to use for a session. Now, now, if you're in Ableton, you're going to press Option Command T and add your return tracks and then just relabel these returns and then they'll show up in your audio out or your sends here as A, B, C, D, but at least you've labeled your returns. Um, there's nothing worse than when I get stems for mixing from somebody producing in Ableton and it just says A return, B return, C return, D return. I don't know what the hell they are for when I have to start mixing, whereas this way, if you go, uh, let's say rename, um, effects, drum, snare, reverb, I know when that stem gets printed out, that will be the drum snare reverb channel. And the final tip is, I'll just show this in Pro Tools, but you can do it in Ableton and Logic and any door is to just hide useless info taking up screen real estate. I don't need this. I don't need to see the comments. I don't need to see... I don't need to see the sends F to J because they're all printer sends. The IO, do I need to see it? Not really because everything's already routed for this session. And that's everything. So I've just bought more real estate for when I'm editing in the mix window. It makes things so much simpler. So those are my 10 settings. And this all happened because I got this new M1 Max super duper freaking laptop. And um, yeah, I was stressing out a bit because I was opening sessions at home and things weren't doing what I wanted them to, to do. And then I realized there were a bunch of settings I forgot to set, which I have here in the studio. And I want to know from you, what are settings that are must haves to, to do in your DAW? How do you set up your DAW before you start working, especially when you get on a new computer? Let me know in the comments below and until next time, take care.